Hello, my name's Mary Davis and I'm one of the vets at Pryor's Farm. So welcome to our third lecture in our equine reproductive series. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about management of the pregnant mare um, and parturition. Now, what we mean by parturition is the um, process of giving birth. And we'll talk through the various different stages um, of birth and um, a little bit about the, the newborn. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about um, the gestation, the length of gestation of the horse. We'll talk a bit about health care, so preventative health care for the mare, thinking about things like vaccinations and parasite control. Um, we'll also talk or touch upon nutritional considerations. Um, and then we'll go through the um, stages of parturition, so preparing the mare for birth, um, the stages of parturition um, and examination and um, looking after the mare post parturition. So once we've got our newborn foal, um, performing newborn foal checks, but also um, managing our mare post birth. So the average gestation length of a horse is 335 days to 342 days. So that's just a useful um, piece of information when working out our due dates. And typically foals born before 320 days are premature and non-viable. And those foals that fall between um, the 320 days and the 335 days are still classed as premature um, and will have variable um, outcomes. So moving on to preventative health care for mares, um, we're going to talk a little bit about vaccination of the pregnant mare. Now there's a couple of reasons uh, that we recommend vaccinating pregnant mares and that's twofold really. One is to protect the mare against disease um, but secondly by vaccinating the mare and providing her with boosters at appropriate times we can prime her immune system so that she produces the antibodies into her colostrum that are then passed on to the foal as the foal nurses and provides that really crucial immunity for the foal um, from, from day one, so from a newborn. So vaccinations we need to think about are influenza and tetanus. Um, so our advice would be to continue to vaccinate your mare um, as you would do annually. And then four to six weeks prior to birth, um, it's really worthwhile giving a booster vaccine at that point. And what that will do is prime the immune system of the mare. She will produce antibodies, which will enter into her milk. And then the foal will be protected from those diseases by the consumption of the colostrum um, and what we call passive transfer of antibodies. So the foal will drink the colostrum, which contains the antibodies, absorb those antibodies, and that will provide a degree of protection against those diseases. The other thing to think about is equine herpes virus. Now, it might be worth considering this in your pregnant mare. Equine herpes virus 1 is associated with abortion in mares. Um, we recommend to vaccinate against equine herpes in brood mares at large studs. Um, and that's because with equine herpes virus 1, you can see abortion storms where you've got large numbers of abortions, but that tends to occur in a stud environment um, where disease can easily spread uh, between the mares. Small private yards that have got one or two breeding mares are at low risk um, and vaccination is optional for those mares. If you are going to vaccinate, then vaccination for equine herpes virus um, is at month five, seven and nine of gestation. Another vaccination we can think about is rotavirus. So rotavirus causes um, foal diarrhoea um, and the vaccination can protect the foal against um, infectious diarrhoea caused by rotavirus. Again, this is an optional um, vaccine and is definitely recommended in large studs um, where the spread of disease um, is at greater risk um, and optional at smaller um, individual private yards. Uh, the vaccine's given at month 8, 9 and 10 of gestation. OK, so moving on to parasite control. Um, a worming programme should always be tailored to um, the individual. But with a broodmare, we need to think a little bit more carefully about her parasite control. 
So regular worm counts throughout her pregnancy every three months um, allow us to monitor the burden of parasites um, that she's carrying and allow us to treat appropriately for the parasites that she's at risk of developing disease from. Um, the importance of good pasture management can't be underestimated. Think about the number of horses on your pasture. Think about whether you're poo picking um, and think about rotation of that pasture. Um, and then we recommend you worm the mares during the foaling period, um, either the week before or a few days after foaling. Um, it's recommended that you worm the mare with an ivermectin-based product around the period of foaling. So that can either be just prior or just after foaling. The reason we recommend an ivermectin-based wormer is because we want to minimise the parasitic load of a parasite called Strongloides westeri. Um, this parasite, the infective larvae, are transmitted to the foal via um, the milk and that can occur from about five days um, after birth. So wormers that we need to think about are wormers that contain ivermectin. Now, do always check the packet um, to check that they're suitable for mares that are lactating. For example, wormers such as Equest, Strongid P or Panicure um, or Equimax are all suitable ivermectin-based products for lactating mares. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. So thinking about nutrition uh, for our brood mares, it's important that we try and maintain a nice even body condition score between sort of two and a half to three out of five. So we're not going to dwell on it too much, but it's important that we maintain a nice consistent body condition score and that overweight mares are restricted in order to reduce um, the risk to both mare and foal. Um, ad lib forage should be provided um, at all times throughout pregnancy. And for the first eight months of pregnancy, um, mares can be maintained purely on good quality forage and grass. We would advise considering supplementing um, the mare with hard feed in the last three months of pregnancy um, with a higher energy and protein levels um, and supplemented vitamins and minerals. So we can think about products um, like stud mix, which just contain higher levels of energy and the appropriate minerals and vitamins. Um, OK, so that sort of covers parasite control and nutrition and vaccination. Just a little note to, to say, don't forget um, her feet and her teeth. Um, and obviously goes without saying that she needs checking every day. It's important that that her feet are kept well trimmed and that her teeth are checked so that she doesn't have any problems with her dentition and the chewing of food. Um, we can see quite a few problems associated with that if that's not kept on top of. OK, so moving on to monitoring and preparing the mare um, for parturition. And just to, just to remind you that parturition means the process of giving birth. So approximately four to six weeks prior to the due date, um, the mare should be moved to the box which she's going to foal in. Um, and this needs to be a clean and a dry environment that's safe and protects her from the weather. Um, the reason we advise moving them sort of four to six weeks is because the mare will adjust to her new environment um, and during this time she'll be exposed to the, the bacteria and the organisms in that environment and she will produce antibodies and um, an immune response to that environment and that will be passed on through her, um, into her colostrum and then passed on to the foal. So the foal will receive an immunity from the local environment. So it's important that we allow the mare time to adjust to her foaling environment. The mare's udder should be checked um, and cleaned if required. So if it's particularly grossly contaminated with dirt, then it's worthwhile cleaning that. Most udders won't require cleaning, um, but do just check um, in the lead up to foaling that it's all um, clean. If the mare has had a caslic procedure, so that's when we suture um, the vulva closed, then that will need reversing prior to um, parturition, so prior to birth. During the last um, month of foaling, the mare needs to be examined frequently. Um, and as parturition nears, you'll notice some things changing um, with the mare. 
Firstly, you'll see some udder enlargement, so her udders will swell and become engorged with milk. Um, and what you will find in the, the days leading up to birth is you'll find that it forms a little wax seal on the end of the teat. As the colostrum forms within the teat, um, a small amount of it will solidify and form a little wax tip on the end of her teat. And that's really a sign that, that birth is not too far away. Um, and that's a term we call waxing up. You might find that the mare runs milk um, and what we mean by that is that she's leaking milk um, and you'll see small amounts of milk down the inside of her leg. Now, small amount of, of running milk is nothing to be too concerned about um, but if she's starting to run large amounts of milk then it might be worth considering collecting that milk. Um, and the reason for that is because Colostrum is the first part, um, the first component of, of the milk that comes through. And if she's leaking that colostrum onto the floor, then the second part will just be milk. Um, and so the foal will miss out on that really important colostrum. So if she is running milk, I'd just recommend you give one of us a call um, and we can chat through options about how we can make sure that that foal receives that really important colostrum in the early stages. Okay, so we'll also see some um, vulval laxity um, and edema. So if you lift her tail in the days leading up to um, partrition, you'll find that the vulva becomes a little bit more relaxed and you might find it becomes a bit edematous, so a little bit swollen. Um, that's normal and it's, um, and it's the start of, um, well, it suggests that partrition is, is around the corner. You might also see a little bit of vulval discharge. Um, now, a small amount of vulval discharge in the days leading up to partition is, is normal and there's nothing to be too concerned about. Um, if the discharge increases in volume or has a foul smell or you have any other concerns, then do always get in touch. But a small amount of vulval discharge is normal. You might also notice rela relaxation of the pelvic ligaments. And this is a term that, and this is something that we often term springing. So when you look at her hind quarters, you'll notice that her pelvic ligaments have become more lax and her hind quarters um, will become springy when you palpate them. So those are sort of the signs that parturition is round the corner and we need to be monitoring the mare quite closely at this point. Okay, so we're just going to talk a little bit about the stages of parturition um, and what we're looking for in, in a normal parturition. So stage one is where the mare becomes a little bit uncomfortable, okay? So this is the first sign that something's happening. Typically lasts between 30 minutes to up to four hours. She might look a little bit restless. She might show signs of colic. Um, she may look round at her flank, uh, swish her tail. Um, you might notice that she's urinating small volumes, but quite frequently. Um, and other signs that look a little bit colicky, like she might get up, she might um, she might lie down, sorry, she might then get up, um, she might get a little bit sweaty, just looking a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and this period is associated with uterine contraction of variable increasing intensity um, and frequency, and her cervix will beginning will begin to dilate. Um, a few minutes later, her waters will break and several litres of fluid um, will discharge from her vagina. And at this point, when her waters have broken, is, the state the, is when we say she's entered stage two of um, parturition. So in stage two of parturition, the cervix dilates further. Um, the fetus passes up to within the birth canal. Um, and within about five minutes, delivery should progress. First, you'll see a foot, um, then followed by a second foot, um, and then if things are progressing normally, uh, a nose will appear. Followed by the head, um, and the most forceful contractions will occur at this point. Um, as the head and shoulders pass through the birth canal, um, the mare will continue with the forceful um, contractions. The foal will be born, um, and the cord will rupture, either as the mare um, stands or as the foal attempts to stand. Now really important at this point, normally the second stage of partrition is quite explosive and short-lived. The delivery of the fetus should occur within 20 minutes of entering into stage two of, of partrition. 
if it's not progressing in a fairly rapid way, then immediate veterinary attention needs to be sought. So pick up the phone and, and give us a buzz. We'd always rather you rang us too early and everything was okay than you rang us too late. So any doubts, pick up the phone. Okay, so stage three, um, the foal has been born um, and the cord has ruptured and the next step is for the mare to pass um, the placenta. So typically the placenta will be passed within three hours of parturition. Um, you'll find that there's an external section of placenta hanging from the vulva um, and the foal will be on the ground attempting to stand. Now what you can do at this, t at this point is tie the um, fold the placenta up and tie it with a bit of string. What that does is it helps, it gives a bit of weight to the placenta which helps to gently apply traction um, to the placenta which can encourage it to, to come away um, and also means that the mare's back legs don't get tangled in the placenta. Please don't ever pull on the placenta. Um, if we get what's called a retained placenta, so a placenta that doesn't want to, to, to come out and be passed, then we need to um, intervene at that point with veterinary intervention. But please don't pull on it. You can risk tearing it and leaving sections within the mare, which can cause problems later down the line. So if the placenta um, hasn't passed within six hours, you should give us a buzz um, and veterinary intervention should be sought. We can see problems with retained placentas or retained fetal membranes. Um, so it's important that the mare is seen um, within quite a short time frame. Um, so then we've got our newborn foal on the ground um, and we should divert a little bit of attention to our mare. Now it's important that we do allow um, our mare and foal to bond but equally we do want to check both our mare and foal over. So um, when we're checking the mare, we're looking for any signs of bleeding. Is she bright? Is she well? Is there any sign of bleeding from her back end, from her vulva? Now, there will always be a little bit of discharge. That's fine. But if we're seeing significant amounts of blood, then we need to um, intervene at that point. Um, have a look to check whether she's torn. Um, so is there any sign of tearing around the, the vulva? Um, and then in the coming hours and days, we're going to monitor the mare, um, check that she's check that she's well in herself and there's no signs of colic. Um, they've gone from having an abdomen that's got a large foal in to quite an empty abdomen and they're at this point um, at risk of, of having, at risk of colicking. So we monitor them closely. Um, but do always allow the foal um, to nurse and allow that bond to occur. So it should be a, a, a good check, but a brief check. Okay, so that nicely brings us to the end of um, the equine series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, watch this space and hopefully we'll bring you um, some more lectures on um, the management of the neonatal foal and the management of the newborn. So thank you very much for listening.